Hi, Marco. My name is Anna. Thank you very much that you found your time to join this meeting. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I introduce myself and uh, I, I explain quickly uh, why we need so much this interview with you. Mm -hmm. I'm a, a Russian baker, born in Moscow, but living in Milan. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have an online school of teaching of home baking, sordo bread. And we have uh, thousands of students who are very curious. And nowadays people are not satisfied by just eating a good bread. They also want to understand. And I mm -hmm. want to, to improve my knowledge. And uh, I think that, that the best is uh, to meet people like you who, uh, who are doing science and there is no better source to find information rather than science. Because information, there is a lot on the internet, like you can Google whatever you want, but uh, the half information about bread is uh, false, like you cannot trust <laughs> actually. Mm -hmm. I mean, at least in Russian, maybe in Italian or English is different. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, you can find right information also some way, somewhat uh, on the internet, but nevertheless, uh, I'm willing to reply to your question. I know, uh, I know that you, you, uh, Basically, all your life you're studying sordo. Is that correct? Uh, part of my research activity is dealing with the sourdough fermentation since about 30 years. Mm -hmm. And I also have your book, which I tried yeah. to, to read. It was hard. <laughs> it's a scientific... Uh, it's a scientific uh, book... Uh, Currently, we are working on uh, the second edition, but uh, I think uh, the focus for this book uh, is mainly for scientists and not probably for a uh, artisan or uh, a bakers. Uh, nevertheless, uh, there, there should be also an Italian version of another book that probably is uh, more... Uh, is easier to the reading should be easier. Ah, can I later ask the, the title of it so I can check, check? I'll send you, I'll send you by email. Thank you very much. Okay, so, so I, uh, first I want to, uh, to ask about your studies. So what basically did you find out in very simple words, what the world should know about Sordo after your studies and did you study sordo, which is the same sordo which we use at home, or it's different sordo? Uh, in the world, doesn't exist uh, the same sourdo. Each baker, uh, each home has uh, its uh, own sourdo. So I did uh, studies. Uh, with different uh, sourdoughs made in our laboratory or coming from uh, artisans or coming from uh, industries. And while the first uh, 20 years of our uh, activity was dealing uh, with the best uh, performance of the sourdough concerning the sensory, rheology, and shelf life properties. Uh, since 10 years ago, all the scientific work of the sourdough is uh, uh, convinced that uh, no doubt the sourdough uh, has, the use of the sourdough has too many advantages regarding the flavor, the taste, the shelf life, and also the structure of the bread. 
since 10 years ago, all the research activity of my laboratory, but also from other international laboratories, was dealing on the nutritional advantages which are related to the use of the sourdough. So the current challenge is to demonstrate that also in this case, no doubt, the sourdough fermentation leads to a number of nutritional advantages. Which are? The nutritional advantages related to the sourdough fermentation, at least compared to the Becker's yeast fermentation or to the chemical leavening, are the higher concentration and the higher bioavailability of minerals, the higher digestibility, digestibility, the lower uh, glycemic index, and uh, the capability to use higher percentage of brain, of fibers, of milling byproducts. So all these advantages were well demonstrated, not only at the laboratory level, but also using in vivo uh, studies where Bible studies means that, for instance, we demonstrated that using people, humans, the sourdough bread is more digestible than Becker's yeast bread. Why is more digestible? Because the gastrointestinal tract transit is faster because uh, the sourdough bread uh, may induce uh, a higher satiety, so you can eat, you can eat uh, a, lower, uh, a, low a lower quantity of bread compared to Becker's yeast. And because after uh, the intake of sourdough bread, the concentration in the blood of free amino acids is higher this means higher digestibility. This means higher absorption of free amino acids compared to Becker's yeast. At the same time, still using uh, people, humans, we demonstrated that uh, after the sourdough bread intake, the level of glucose in the blood is lower than uh, when you ingest Becker's yeast bread. Usually, breads have the drawback to increase the glycemia. And there is a classification of breads based on the glycemic index. And based on a classification from a medical school of New England, you can move the glycemic index of a bread from high to low mm -hmm. just using the sourdough fermentation and including in the formula a small percentage of fibers. So the sourdough bread has also many advantages compared to the other processes for making bread. That's incredible. Like th this always amazed me that how mm -hmm. nature thought of us <laughs> mm -hmm. to give everything for us in such a good product as bread is. But you know, there is, um, uh, I, I read your studies. I read your studies. Of course, I, I'm sure I didn't understand everything because I, I'm not able. But what you're saying is very like, I understand 
the main meaning. And I think all people understand. But in Russian, for example, society now is very common idea that Oh, actually, the long fermentation, that makes bread better. And if you use just a little amount of industrial yeast, it will be like the same good bread if you use sordo. Because the long fermentation, that what means a lot. Not the uh, bacteria, which we don't have in commercial yeast. Uh, and uh, so sordo bread, Oh, it's just uh, like, mm, like, you know, part of the fashion, let's say, like marketing. So there is this idea and I kind of feel it's wrong. <laughs> I understand that the bread can be very good bread if you use small amount of yeast. I know like baguette in Paris, you can eat very well, the good one. But I've, I don't have enough knowledge and I wanted to ask you, can you make the same good uh, bread with sourdough and using small amount of commercial yeast? You cannot, you cannot for many, many reasons, especially because when you are using yeast, as you rightly stated, in the baker's yeast, you have only yeast and especially saccharomyces cerevis. When you are using the sourdough, you are using yeast, like in the Becker's yeast, and in most of the cases also with the same species, saccharomyces cerevis. But in the sourdough, together yeast, you have lactic acid bacteria. They are not present in the Becker's yeast. What lactic acid bacteria are doing during fermentation? They are doing a fermentation, a lactic acid fermentation. Therefore, they favor a process of acidification. The process of acidification has so many repercussions on the enzyme activities of the flower on the structure of the bread, on the shelf life of the bread. Time, at the same time, lactic acid bacteria have the capability to partially degrade proteins. Proteins and in especially intermediate products from proteins, which are peptides. Thus, liberating during fermentation free amino acids. Free amino acids are important for many aspects, for nutrition and so on, but also for the flavor. Why? Because they are responsible for the flavor, but at the same time, they are precursors of chemical compounds which are generated during baking. If free amino acids are present, these chemical compounds during baking may be synthesized. On the contrary case, no. So only with sourdough, you may get acidification and proteolysis. You cannot have the same with Becker's yeast. So, uh, is a, is a very empirical and not justified conclusion that you may get the same quality of bread using sourdough and Becker's yeast. Obviously, sourdough fermentation needs a longer time with respect to Becker's yeast fermentation. But most of the studies and the increase of knowledge regarding the sourdough fermentation currently give you the possibility to have, I want to say, not so long fermentation. You may get the results I spoke before in two, three, four hours maximum. We are not speaking about uh, 24 hours, two days of fermentation. 
Therefore, you can apply the sour fermentation also under industrial conditions. A raw estimation of the market in Europe uh, highlights that currently about 50% of the market for baked goods is from sourdough fermentation. And the trend is daily increasing. Increasing, that's amazing. But I'm very happy about it. Um, and uh, th there is then another question. There is another myth in the society that actually the sourdough, which we make at home, like this one, for example, the liquid one, mm -hmm. we can be actually dangerous can be dangerous, so it's better to buy the, the good one, sort of from laboratory, which was made in labor laboratory conditions, and better to not do it at home because you can actually get some disease from it, some toxins, some, I don't know what. So is it true? Can I get hurt? I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry, Anna, but the difficulty I have, I never had this history, that sourdough made uh, at home. Uh, my difficulty is the following. I don't know where and who said uh, uh, this uh, uh, statement. Uh, sourdough made at home has not any risk. You may have a good or not sourdough. You, you may be successful in making sourdough, but certainly you have not any risk. And you may uh, monitor your sourdough, just testing a small part of the sourdough. If the sourdough is acid, the sourdough goes well, no problem. If when you use the sourdough, the volume of your dough increases in three, four hours, two, three times, the sourdough is going well. And don't forget one thing, that sourdough is used for making so-called baked goods and baking takes place at temperatures having the capability of killing microbes except for some spore forming and uh, without any risk for the health the only risk you may have is that your bread is not so good as a flavor as a volume but no healthy risk using sourdough. What I am personally very curious in uh, comparing uh, Leveto Madre uh, Classico Italiano, which is 50% of hydration and 100% uh, uh, of hydration, Licoli. Uh, what is the main difference? The, dif the only difference is that in one case, you have more water, more free water, more water and more free water. And in another case, you have less water and less free water. These are two different conditions, obviously. Uh, for some reasons, where you have more water, you have less flour. If you have less flour, you have less nutrients for microbes. So the, right. there are differences. Both the conditions are useful to get the sourdough. But what you may expect is that your sourdough will have different performances if you have I hydration or low hydration. But Lievito Madre in Italy 
can be produced under both conditions. The right. conclusion is only that you may have different performances. But are there different That's, species who live? Are there different uh, bacteria? Yes, 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 yes. For instance, if today you have in your box a liquid sourdough, and if tomorrow you decide to decrease the level of hydration, not probably tomorrow, but if you continue for two, three, four days, one week, then you change the microbes which are present uh, in your dough. This is the only effect. And having different microbes means to have sourdough having different performances. Okay? Is it true that uh, in a, a solid one, in, where is 50% of water, there live uh, osma tolerant uh, yeasts? Those who can survive better with in dough with high sugar percentage. Uh, osma tolerant yeast, the definition of osma tolerant yeast refer to the presence of uh, carbohydrates. So osmotolerant yeasts are those better adapting uh, to the presence of high concentration of sugars, likely when you are producing the panettone or the pandoro. Yeah. And to favor this adaptation, probably is better to start with the firm sourdough fermentation. Firm or solid, as you call it. Uh -huh. So they, they, the microbes which live in solid one are more osmotolerant than those who live in liquid. No, I don't want to say that. Ah, okay. Those living in presence of high concentration of sugars, Apart from if they are on firm or liquid conditions, mm -hmm. they are also tolerant. But obviously, for making some sweet baked good, you need the addition of sugars. And the addition of sugars has a repercussion on the viability of microbes, on the survival of microbes. Those microbes tolerating better sugars are defining osmo. Okay, got it. I'm sorry, uh, two yes. minutes more. I'm sorry, last question, yeah. please. Yeah, easy, of course. Marco, okay, then uh, I just want to ask you, uh, I just want to ask you which bread you like. Do you eat bread? Uh, yes, obviously, and uh, I'm in uh, favor that... Uh, also in the restaurant, we need to pay attention not only to dishes, not only to wines, but also to breads. And not all the bread have uh, the same uh, pairing uh, with uh, all uh, dishes. So usually I'm recommending uh, a careful selection of breads uh, also in a certain level uh, restaurant. Uh, personally, I like uh, uh, breads made uh, not with the soft uh, wheat, but made with the durum wheat. Like semolina, like semola, semola. Yes, semola, semola yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. We make the, the one uh, in our course, we have one, which is like cento per cento, per cento siamola. Okay. I love this bread. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, Mark. so my, my thank you for the interview and uh, go ahead, okay? Bye, have a good day. And you too, bye.